Hello, my name is Graham Bogog. I'm the Managing Director of Oakwood Valuation Surveyors in Cheshire. I've been advising the rural community in Cheshire and the North West for over 30 years. Today I'd like to talk to you about the occupation of farmland. Hopefully some of you will be offered the opportunity of renting land in the not too distant future as young farmers and new entrants. There are several forms of agreement that could be used, but the most common one is the Farm Business Tenancy Agreement. Farm Business Tenancy Agreements, or FBTs as they're commonly known, were introduced in 1995. So we've had them for 25 years, and you could say they're a well-trodden path. They were brought in to speed up the rate at which farmland was being let, something that may not have been achieved, but also to allow diversification as they do allow for non-agricultural use. One of the first things that you need to remember is that the statutory fallback is very limited. The predecessor act, which was the Agricultural Holdings Act 1986, had far more provisions to arguably protect farmers from the um, landlords. The first thing to remember is that rent is the market rent. There is some provision for agreeing alternative basis of rent assessment but there has to be a formula and it is prescribed in the Act as to how that formula works. Therefore most agreements finish up being a market rent. Therefore when you enter agreement you just have to be wary as to where the market rent may finish up over a period of years. Allied to rent and arguably more important repairs and the repairing obligation have to be considered very carefully. Some agreements have put and keep in repair. That means if the building has no roof on it when you take it, you may have to put a roof on it and keep it in good repair for the duration of the agreement. It's very important that you consider the repairing obligations and if you have any uncertainty, you do query it. There are no model repairing clauses directly applicable to FBTs. The old Act, the 1986 Act, did have model repairing clauses and sometimes these are imported into FBT agreements. There's no reason why this can't be done, but you do just have to be very careful in understanding what your repairing obligations are as tenant. FBTs aren't really suitable for horse lettings or for hobby farmers. The requirement is that they represent a trade or business. In terms of the length of an agreement, you have total freedom of contract. The longest one I've seen, and I have a copy in my office, is 999 years. Typically, typically they're for two, five, ten years, and hopefully reflect the work which is required by the tenant and the extent of holding that's being let. Often arable agreements are for one or two years, whereas letting a dairy farm might be for 15 or 20. An agreement that runs for two years just expires and there's no requirement for the landlord to give you any notification that it's coming to an end. If the agreement is for in excess of two years then the notice period is one year. Therefore if the agreement runs over by just a day without the landlord having served notice then it could be up to four years before it could actually be ended. The final point I'd like to raise is over improvements. There is no statutory requirement for the landlord to pay you for improvements. If you wish to do improvements to the holding, then you do need the landlord's consent. Be wary. You can't argue that the landlord knew what you were doing or the landlord watched you doing it. If he hasn't consented, then there's no requirement for the landlord to compensate you. I wish young farmers and new entrants well in their quest to develop their businesses. It's an exciting time and who knows what the future holds. But I do urge caution when signing a farm business tenancy agreement, make sure that you are aware of the requirements and provisions and what you're signing up to. Thank you very much.